Hello. Uh, do you hear me? Okay. Uh, thank you, Professor Kimura. Or, or may I call you Ayasan as usual? Uh, it's thank you for your introduction. It's uh, I'm afraid it's a bit flattering, but uh, uh, it's uh, I'm very happy to have this opportunity uh, presenting our new film and uh, 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 for the world audience and. Uh, Actually, we uh, released uh, this uh, new documentary in uh, uh, early February last month, and uh, Ayasan, uh, Professor Kimura, joined uh, the online session for on that occasion, and she insisted you should have a English version as quickly as possible, and she actually uh, gave us a quick draft translation of the. Uh, script, so so we were sort of uh, driven to to prepare the English subtitle version, and we just made it uh, in time uh, with the help of Lonnie and Ayasan and other people. And I must also acknowledge uh, another person. Uh, can I just uh, show uh, uh, make a screen share? Is it going? Yeah, uh, at the end of the, the end roll of the film we've just seen, uh, the film filming director Matsumoto Hikaru, uh, Hikaru kun, uh, he is a young member of the, the Friend of the Earth International Japan. And he's been doing all the field work for this film and uh, filming and editing. And he was very, very dedicated person to make this uh, work uh, coming out. Uh, and unfortunately, he's not with us he, here today. Uh, he's in, I think he's in Fukushima right now. But uh, so uh, I just acknowledge him. And I also uh, want to. Uh, show a couple of uh, website addresses, uh, hang on. Is it shown on the screen, in your screen? Okay, uh, this one is a Citizens Co uh, Commission of nu on Nuclear Energy uh, website. And another is a uh, 311 that uh, March 11th, uh, Mieruka project. Um, if you see some Japanese, Mieruka means make it visible, uh, make uh, visible something hidden. Uh, you know, this, if you visit this website, uh, I'll show you in a moment. Hang on. Uh, As uh, uh, this is a CCNA website, uh, it's in Japanese, but you have an English window here. Uh, you can see some of the works in English. And uh, if you click here, this blue button on the right upper side, uh, side of the uh, page, uh, there are materials about uh, contaminated water release issues, and there are some English materials here. So, so you we can have a look later. Uh, if you visit the uh, Mieruka project website, uh, produced by FOE Japan, which is a co-producer of this film, uh, you, it's again, it's in Japanese, but you have an English uh, window. And uh, you see uh, many people who appeared in the documentary, uh, Oga-san, 
Kan Mosan, uh, Fisher Folks, uh, Suge no san, Hasegawa san, uh, Ito san, you know, uh, you can uh, listen to their voices with a much longer version uh, of their interviews. So these are the basic materials and, uh, and the film we, we've seen is just a kind of a summary of uh, their voices. Okay. Uh, so we just get back to Uh, how do I stop this? Okay. Uh, we in the film we made some comparison with the Chernobyl accident, and uh, well, there are many common uh, points uh, between Fukushima and Chernobyl. For example, it's a very extremely long time is necessary to settle the issue, and it's takes a huge manpower, uh, huge money. So these are common things, but uh, the big difference uh, between Fukushima and Chernobyl is uh, Fukushima has the sea while Chernobyl doesn't. You know, so uh, some of you may be aware that 90% of the fallout from the Fukushima explosions uh, went to the went to the ocean and only 10% uh, went to the land. And so, so uh, it, it's a very international issue and uh, you know, it's uh, Hawaii in the middle of ocean and it's uh, should worry you very much. And uh, one, another difference between Fukushima and Chernobyl is in the case of Chernobyl, international commitment and cooperation is, is, is very developed. But in the case of Fukushima, so far, uh, international uh, cooperation to, to settle the issue is, is very poor so far. So, so I, we would need your help. Uh, today, I have uh, one good news and one bad news. And good news is that the, the Japanese government uh, has a uh, postponed its decision to release the contaminated water into the, the ocean. Uh, I, I mean, we, we just put it back a little bit, but they, they haven't abandoned, they haven't canceled the plan, but it, it's postponed. Uh, bad news is that, that the Japanese government, uh, it, it's been, it's, it was released yesterday or the, the day before. Uh, uh, the government is planning to change its uh, food standards uh, and lo lose, loosen it up to 1,000 becquerels per kilograms. That's 10 times the current standard. So, so they, they just want to uh, lose the standards, by losing the standards, you you, uh, you won't see the problem, you know, any longer. So, so the problems and turmoil is continuing. And I hope the whole world would, uh, should keep an eye on this issue. Uh, and uh, I'm very glad uh, you joined uh, this opportunity and I'd like to take some questions. Well, okay, thank you, Lonnie. Yes, uh, yes, okay. So there are a number of questions, uh, very good questions that have come in. I'll just go through them. Uh, leukemia, Down syndrome, and neonatal death were cited. Is there data, data on physical birth defects over the past 10 years? I've seen posts about abnormal fish and flowers, so I wondered about humans. Uh, okay. Uh, no, in Fukushima, uh, there's no uh, such uh, incidents. Uh, I, I mean, uh, uh, no uh, increase uh, in statistical terms, no increase uh, is uh, recognized, but uh, we should keep an eye on that. And, and the people are very afraid of that. 
Okay, this is about um, alternative energy sources. Um, during the documentary, they talked about relying less on nuclear power plants. What other forms of energy sources could be used instead? Uh, in case of Japan, it's uh, hydro and wind and solar. These are three main things. And the biomass is, is also a possibility. And uh, potentially geothermal is, is a huge potential, but uh, it, it's, uh, we haven't uh, developed very much on this, but it's, it's a big potential, yeah. Well, uh, actually the uh, Fukushima prefecture, uh, the prefectural administration decided to, to make uh, Fukushima a uh, hundred percent renewable energy prefecture by uh, 2050. So, so I, I think Hawaii has a similar uh, uh, objective for uh, 250. Uh, and uh, the actual, actually the, the uh, development of solar and uh, wind is, is going on very fast in Fukushima, yeah. But the, the Japanese government hasn't, uh, uh, well, they, they abandoned the Fukushima reactors, but they, they are trying to uh, start up other reactors in other parts of the country. That's what's going on. Okay, the next question relates to the withholding of information. Um, sad to see how people were kept in the dark to their detriment. We see the same thing in the United States in the present situation of COVID-19. A common thread is relying on authorities. Any suggestions on how best to overcome this? Good question. And, and that's also my question. <laughs> Yeah, it's a very uh, important and serious issue. Uh, for for example, he, he, after the Fukushima accident, uh, the, another difference uh, from Chernobyl is in Chernobyl, the, the Soviet government that time uh, measured very quickly so many uh, children and uh, other peoples. I, I mean, they they monitor the the. Uh, exposure levels and they they checked uh, tens of thousands of children very quickly and in Fukushima only 1000 or 1200 children were measured and uh, uh, after the time it's you know so 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 the data is very limited and they they did that very intentionally. I mean, if there's no data, there would be no, you know, uh, accusation. <laughs> so, so the information disclosure is closure and disclosure is a very, very important issue. We, I don't have a good answer to this issue, but uh, I just uh, uh, many people are, are working hard to find out uh, official records. A, or archives which has not been disclosed and uh, uh, I mean, I mean the journalists and the researchers and we, we are doing very hard but uh, that's a very important aspect of the issue yeah okay this is on um, international reactions the film shows western reactions to the Fukushima disaster what about the US how did the USA respond to the disaster? As of now, what is the US's stance uh, to regarding Japan's current intentions in nuclearization? Okay, uh, at the time of accident, the United States uh, military was very, very uh, quick to respond. And uh, uh, actually they, had uh, they had much more serious uh, view of how the accident would uh, develop and they, they were much serious than the Japanese government was that time. And, and uh, about the nuclear energy utilization, uh, it's a bit complicated issue. I mean, I mean the, there are two uh, opinions in the US as well. I mean, I mean some 
uh, would uh, uh, accept Japan's nuclearization, including the military uh, utilization of uh, uh, nuclear atomic weapons. I, I mean, I, not, not right now, but as a potential, uh, they, uh, uh, some, some of the United States uh, uh, position would accept that, and others, they are, they are quite against the, the uh, atomic militarization of the of Japan, and so so it's uh, so, so there are at the government opinion in United States are divided, and they the in in Japan peop, most of the people are against uh, nuclear power utilization and uh, uh, either commercial or military, but there, there are a division of opinions among the government. Some people are very keen to maintain the uh, military potential or at atomic utilization. So, so it's a very another serious issue we have. Okay, on evacuees. Were the evacuees just moved all over the country or were there specific areas that people were moved to? Uh, okay, uh, actually they, they, they are all over the the country, but some uh, uh, some prefectures, some neighboring prefectures were uh, more helpful uh, than others. So, so uh, quite a uh, number of uh, evacuees are in Yamagata, Niigata, uh, Tokyo, uh, some uh, some western prefectures, but uh, uh, they are all over the country, including Okinawa and overseas. I think some are in Hawaii as well, yeah. Okay, uh, this is a comment rather than a question. Um, uh, let's see, roll back up. How about the USA and other governments uh, asking for or demanding continuous surveys on radioactive materials flowing to coasts and islands of their territories against Japanese government neglect of proper research? Oh, I agree. I mean, I mean, uh, international pressure is very a good, very effective way to move the Japanese government. You know, so uh, well at the moment, uh, uh, the government is uh, obsessed with the holding Olympic Games, <laughs> uh, which is quite unlikely now. But uh, after uh, this uh, obsession is over. Uh, they have to face the, the uh, nuclear disaster issue again, and the international voices are very important. Uh, well, immediately, e, the immediate issue is the, the release, ocean release problem of the contaminated water, but there are also other issues like uh, uh, soil monitoring and the, the ocean survey and uh, there, there are many things the government is neglecting, so so the international pressure is very important. I, I, I mean, I we need your help. Okay, a couple of days ago, an advanced copy of the UN Scientific Committee on the Effects of Atomic Radiation was released. The report and the committee chair, Dr. Gillian Hirth, again emphasize there will be no adverse health effects from the Fuku Fukushima nuclear re radiation. What do you think of the report, which has been released since 2013? Any comments on the uh, UNSC EAR studies? Yeah, yes, we saw that uh, report and it's been reported in Japan as well. Uh, uh, basically, they are based on the very limited data uh, as I mentioned, they, the, the number of the children uh, monitored immediately after the accident was very limited. I mean, uh, less than 2,000 children were uh, measured for their uh, thyroid uh, exposures. So, so uh, if, if you, uh, you can say anything with a very limited number of data, uh, and uh, we should look at the what actually happening. We we have a, a quite a large number of uh, uh, thyroid cancer cases, and uh, 
there is no other explanation other than uh, uh, nuclear accident. Why why such uh, spike is uh, taking place? Okay. You said Hawaii should be worried about the situation. We get zero coverage on Fukushima radiation affecting Hawaii here. What can you tell us about it? And what are the good ways uh, that we in Hawaii uh, can investigate this further? Uh, I'm not saying that Hawaii is in immediate danger. Uh, I'm not saying that, but uh, you know, uh, ocean is, is between us and this, this is a very, very uh, invaluable resource that connect us together, and uh, if we if we uh, can avoid the release of uh, radioactivity or whatever, uh, the co any contamination, we should avoid. Uh, I mean, if we can avoid. And in case of the Fukushima uh, contaminated water, there are uh, uh, practical engineering measures to avoid uh, release. Uh, I mean, I mean, there are. Uh, alternative ways to handling the stuff. So, so that's what I'm saying. Okay, um, you kind of started to answer this question already. It's related to the, the previous one, but um, well, first off, outstanding presentation and amazing film, Dr. Osokawa. Uh, what do we know about the spread of radiation into the ocean and on beyond to Hawaii, North America? Seems to me this would be an alarming enough for people around the world to give more attention to the Fukushima disaster. Uh, well, you know, the, the United States uh, uh, Navy and other uh, official institutions are uh, doing very uh, uh, much monitoring and uh, uh, Trace amount of radioactivity caused by the Fukushima accident is recorded, but it's it's not an alarming level at the moment so far. But you know, if uh, if you uh, if we in Japan keep operating other nuclear uh, plants and facilities, there there can be a next uh, accident, a third accident, fourth accident. It's we just uh, have to stop that to happen, yeah. And also, uh, you know, the wind is always from west to east, you know, uh, and the, we here in Japan uh, and in Korea, in China, all the, the nuclear uh, installations are on eastern coast because if it blows up, the wind, brings uh, the plume to the uh, to the sea that that's why they are on the east coast you know so so uh, we, we you know it's it, it's a uh, it's international issue you uh, we, we have to uh, look at the map very carefully you know okay so this is a very straightforward and practical question. Is it safe to return to Fukushima? Depends on the places, uh, and also depends on on the uh, age. Uh, I mean, I mean, the, uh, most of the returnees uh, in the uh, excluded zones. Uh, well, when when the uh, evacuation order is lifted, uh, uh, I'm in some. 20, 30 percent of the original uh, residents are returning, but uh, most they are mostly over 60, 70, 80s. I mean, the young people don't are not returning. Uh, well, I, I mean, and uh, not all the places are dangerous. I, I mean, uh, you could uh, uh, return and uh, uh, have a very safe life, but uh, uh, still you have hot spots everywhere and you have to be very careful. And the, if you don't like uh, to live in that manner, you uh, 
I, I, actually, many people uh, don't like to live that way. So, so uh, many of them are still outside their hometowns, uh, despite the lifting of the evacuation order. So, so, uh, and I, I will personally, I don't recommend to return. But uh, uh, if you have a, you have to return. They have to be very careful about how to live in such environment. Okay, um, this has to do with citizen science. You said that there's a lot of similarities between Chernobyl and Fukushima, but in terms of citizens' use of science and technology, they are quite different as Professor Kimura analyzed. You think citizen science is useful to assist people's returning? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah, I'm, I mean, uh, if if you uh, well, well, when you return to your hometown, uh, you you should not uh, believe what the authorities say. <laughs> I, I mean, I mean, you have to uh, uh, you have to uh, check the figures, check the data, what uh, think very carefully about what they tell you, and and the citizen science. Uh, uh, info, uh, information and uh, the activities are very important to keep you aware of the the potential problems. And uh, also, a uh, uh, very important aspect of citizen science is networking. I mean, one person or one group can cannot do very much, but uh, but if you if you uh, network and uh, exchange experience and information that uh, can have a, a sort of power and, uh, you know, uh, social impact, you know. So I, I think the comment is, is quite right. Okay. Um, this is actually from the uh, Japanese Studies Library in the librarian at the University of Michigan. Um, so just to summarize her, her question, uh, one of her students is looking at uh, thyroid cancer in children uh, related to the Fukushima disaster. And um, she knows that, uh, let's see, um, there seems to be a lot of research on the medical aspects of uh, thyroid cancer in Western medical journal. Uh, but the student is looking more for social coverage of children uh, relating to thyroid cancers. Uh, she mentions that the film says that some facts have been hidden from the public. Uh, would it be the case or that um, there are not many cases of thyroid cancer children patients? Or would it be the case that, um, I think she's you know sort of, uh, playing devil's advocate here, would it be the case that uh, there are actually not many cases of thyroid cancer in children uh, in the Fukushima area? I'm sorry, I don't get the, the question very well. What what was the point? Uh, what, 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 what was the question? Again? Um, I suppose we could answer live. Uh, okay. uh, Keiko Yokota Carver, did you want to go live? You're still here. I think you can just speak up. Hello, can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, okay, I'm sorry. Actually, this student is looking for the narratives, the experiences, the, the real experience. So I tried to find it, but uh, I saw some committee members, male committee members, uh, the government, like a local government officials, are making statement. Uh, but I haven't really found any like a. But I I I I suppose the children don't speak up because they are minor. Uh, but even the parents, I haven't really seen any document uh, documentary uh, narratives in YouTube and things like this. So, is it prohibit like a, is a government local government pressure that these people don't speak up or uh, just uh, the local government tried to hide the facts 
from my ex like from like according to what you said. So, um, are they trying to? Uh, yeah, them? yeah, I, I got the point. Yes. Uh, well, uh, there are. It's a bit very complicated issue. There are many factors. Uh, the 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 most important thing is that the the official statistics doesn't cover the whole picture. I I mean. The Fukushima Prefecture uh, statistics of the number of the patients and the number of the, the malignant cases is uh, limited. That's only what they surveyed. And there are other patients, other malignant cases outside the survey. And uh, they only uh, uh, research in Fukushima. And there are um, many other parts of uh, the country which has a uh, uh, serious uh, contamination and uh, thyroid uh, cancer cases uh, among children, not only among children, but also the uh, young adults, like 20, 30 years old people. And uh, well, there is no official ban <laughs> or prohibition or, or, or on talking about the problem, but, but uh, as we saw in the documentary, film, uh, the community pressure is, is very harsh. I mean, uh, they don't want people to talk about very much about the thyroid cancer cases because it's, it's not only the actual cases, but also the future cases is uh, their concern that there can be more cases in the future. And if you uh, had a bad gossip, uh, that would affect their uh, marriage, uh, job hunting, and all, all aspect of their life. And uh, what what upset me quite uh, uh, what what quite upset me is that the government and some some uh, medical doctors are claiming that thy thyroid cancer is not fatal kind of cancer. Well, you you don't die very much. I mean, you, you can't have an operation and you can find, uh, you, if, if you, if you uh, take an operation, uh, you can get rid of the cancer. But uh, after the operation, you should uh, uh, keep taking the uh, tablets for all your life. And uh, it, it's very, very, uh, it's an economic burden and it's also a very psychological burden and uh, the, the health conditions is affected after the operation so so it's not a very simple operation and uh, you know recover at 100 percent that's not the case so so uh, I, I mean uh, the, the government is trying to make the problem as look as little as possible, uh, but we have to listen to what the actual, the, the, we have to listen to the people who are actually suffering and what's going on. Okay, so we're coming on 5.30, uh, which was our official um, ending time. I think we can keep going until we get through the questions that have been submitted so far. Uh, is that okay with you? Professor Osakal? Right, yep. Yeah, okay. So, um, yeah, this is about kugiri, Japanese term. So after 10 years, what is the kugiri for the government, for Fukushima people, for Fukushima's government? Uh, well, yeah, it's uh, something uh, very much talked about these, these days. <laughs> I mean, it's 10 years uh, now. And uh, some uh, formal ceremonies and uh, are ending this year, not no longer next year. But uh, nobody is thinking that uh, the things are over. Uh, and uh, well, actually, the the very interesting thing is that the government and the uh, Tokyo Electric Power Company is uh, claiming that they will decommission the uh, 
nuclear reactor plants in 30 to 40 years. They were saying, they are saying this uh, five years ago, uh, they were saying we would uh, uh, end the decommission work in 30 to 40 years. I bet they will be saying the same next year uh, after next. So, so uh, there's, there's no uh, cookie so far. And we don't, we don't see when will the cookie would be. By the way, just a way of putting on, I think good translation for Kugiri might be endpoint, mm -hmm. conclusion. Conclusion. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last year, the Japanese government launched the Go To Travel campaign to encourage domestic tourism outside of the major cities during the pandemic. What are the stances of Fukushima Prefecture and its residents with regard to this campaign? Uh, the administration is very eager to, to promote uh, tourism, to, to, to revive the prefecture's economy. And uh, well, you, you know, Fukushima is a very beautiful country. Uh, and the tourism was a very important uh, industry. And after the accident, the that, that industry was sort of crushed. Uh, and so the administration was uh, keen to make use of this uh, go to travel uh, scheme to revive the local economy, but uh, most many people were quite upset about the idea. Uh, well, mainly because of, of that uh, uh, adverse effect on the pandemic, and I, I mean the, the the danger of spreading the uh, virus, and also. Uh, uh, the, they are upset about uh, uh, prefecture administration's uh, uh, emphasis on economy. Economy side, uh, they they uh, need more uh, human side support uh, for the victims. Uh, so that was the general response. Okay, um, this is from a graduate student uh, who studies the three eleven disaster. Uh, do you have the, can you see the Q&A? Uh, yeah, yep. Yeah. yeah, his question is in Japanese and um, I think maybe I should just do a rough translation of it. You could read the Japanese question. Do you see it? Uh, is that Tokikake-san? Yeah, uh, oh, e. right. Tokikake. I, yeah, I'm looking at the. Okay, and I'll, in the meantime, I'll just try to s translate as best I can. The, question in the English. So, um, oh yeah, uh, yeah. C can I just uh, summarize the point of the question? Yeah, so basically it's saying that the um, population structure uh, of um, the evacuation areas is changing because, um, you know, uh, people not wanting to come back and, um, uh, let's see, I hope I'm getting this right, um, and so on. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, nevertheless, the government, the national government's um, policy of returning, uh, encouraging return to the evacuating areas, evacuation areas is continuing. Um, what do you think about that? I guess it's a very rough translation of mm -hmm. what he's asking. Okay. Uh, uh, there are two issues. One is, uh, will, will the original resident uh, return in future? That's one thing. And uh, another thing is uh, what would be the future population uh, composition of the uh, towns in the evacuation zones? Uh, actually, the, uh, the nuclear power station in the middle of the decommissioning work, uh, they, and it takes, uh, I'm, I'm sure they will take more than 40 years and uh, they will take uh, 60, 50 or more years to come. And that means uh, they will use a um, huge manpower. I mean, so the labor population will be big. So so there are, there are actually, there are, as, as you saw in the documentary, the uh, Itakura-san's remark in the film, uh, only limited number of people original uh, of the original uh, residents uh, have returned, but uh, there are so many uh, 
workers in uniforms uh, walking in the street. Uh, so actually the, the half of the current population, more than half of the current population is, is wo workers who, who work for the decommissioning work in the uh, nuclear plant, sta nuclear station. Uh, and uh, in future, that uh, tendency will uh, be more. I, I mean, I mean, the main population will be will consist of the people from outside. Uh, so, so uh, it's a very delicate issue. I, I mean, the local government want to keep the the town, city, village, whatever, uh, and they need population. And they, the population doesn't have to be the original people. So, so it, 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 it's what, what actually happening there. And, uh, but there's also uh, other aspect of the issue. I mean, uh, most of the young people, young generation of the original resident are not returning, but they might think returning after 30, 40, 50 years. I mean, when they retire, they might choose uh, Fukushima as their retiring home. I mean, I, they, they want to uh, leave and rare child uh, outside their the hometown, but they might think of returning to the original towns. And so, so it's a long, that will be a long story and it can't happen. Okay, this uh, is about the UN uh, science report that we talked about earlier, but coming at the, um, you know, the issue from a slightly different angle. So the report says, the report concluded that the increases in Fukushima thyroid cases are the result of more sensitive tests, not the result of increases in radiation. Is this a correct interpretation of the report or do you think the report is incorrect? Uh, I don't think so. I, I mean, the, 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 there is an increase by uh, much testing, uh, but it, uh, that, that increase would be maybe it, 10% or 20% of, of the total number of found uh, of thyroid cancer cases. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's medically impossible to, to interpret that all the, the increase is because of the uh, testing. Okay, another pretty straightforward question. Would you eat vegetables, rice, seafood, and so on from Fukushima or the waters off the prefecture? Uh, well, I'm eating actually. <laughs> I'm not a young man. Uh, I, I, I don't uh, uh, let our children eat them. I, I, I do eat them. Yeah. Okay, and uh, finally, I, I mean, I mean the, the most of the. Uh, Fukushima uh, products uh, through market it is tested very uh, thoroughly and uh, there is no immediate danger. But there are uh, some uh, stuff like mushrooms and uh, uh, wild plants which, uh, which go outside the market. I mean, I mean there, there are internet trading, you know, uh, and uh, there are also uh, personal hunting uh so so uh, uh, but the market food is is fairly safe now uh but uh, you know uh, the one problem in japan is uh, they set a standard like a uh, hundred becquerels per kilo and uh, some uh, cooperative unions uh, set a stricter uh standards like 50 uh, and the Fishermen's Union set uh, 25 becquerels, so 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 it's fairly uh, strict. Uh, control is going on, but but the problem is they don't. The I mean the government does not allow 
uh, how much backers were actually there. I mean, if, if it's lower than 100, uh, governments uh, allowed to say it's below 100. But it, it, they don't allow how much was it? It was it the ten? Was it fifty? Was it uh, eighty nine? You know, uh, it's suppressed. Uh, so, so that's what's happening. So, uh, I, I mean, the, it's not transparent. I, I, I think the transparency is very uh, important. In okay, the last question kind of connects directly into what you were uh, discussing. So. How do people measure whether seafood is good to eat or not due to the radiation from the nuclear power plant? So how do you how do you measure uh, what, what, radiation? What, sorry, what do you mean? How do you measure? Uh, how how do people measure whether seafood is good to eat or not? How do you measure the radiation? Oh, uh, let's say uh, if you're concerned you mean, about the levels. Well, you know, Chernobyl standard is, is uh, something around uh, 25, 30, and well, I would recommend uh, less than five becquerels per kilo, but it's my personal recommendation. And uh, Chernobyl standard would be 25, 30, around that. Uh, and the, the Fukushima Fisher Union set the 25 uh, becquerels per kilo. Uh, uh, you know, that that's, uh, I mean, uh, very uh, kind of a, uh, practical and uh, reasonable level. And, I, but, you know, the government is trying to uh, lose it to, to 1,000 backers, which happens to be the equal, uh, the same as the uh, milk uh, standard at the, in Moscow in Chernobyl time. You know, that's, that, that's uh, I'm very mad to hear that. You know. Well, I think the question was, um, you know, if you were, if you wanted to measure the radiation in seafood or whatever, how would you do it? What instruments would you use? Uh, well, the Fukushima fishery unions were using a uh, uh, isotope detector, uh, not not the uh, not the Geiger counter. It's uh, they. Uh, I, I mean, you 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 can't. You can't measure the same stuff as you eat. I mean, you you just get one sample and uh, cut 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 all the fish in small pieces and put in the container and uh, put in the detector. And you you can't eat that sample. You you eat uh, uh, other uh, fish uh, caught in the same catch. You know. So that, that's what they are doing. Okay. Well, that was the last question. Um, I'd like to uh, thank Professor Hosokawa for um, so carefully and thoughtfully answering all the questions. And of course, for um, bringing about your, your documentary in the first place. I think I, on behalf of the audience, I think I can say that uh, we found it all most informative and certainly appreciate your, your work. Um, for those of you who are still here, I might note that um, Park has kindly uh, given us a copy of the film, and this will be made available to UH faculty and students um, in the uh, library system. So you can stream it yourself as long as you, you have a UH ID card. And, uh, we want to thank you 